This video is going to be on electrolysis of water and salt. It is very similar to the electrolysis of, or electroplating electrolysis, except um, neither one of them is going to be the definitive red cat, I guess you could say. Um, so we'll get right to it and I'll explain how it works. So electrolysis of water, if you think about the word electrolysis, it really is broken up into two, electro and lice. Um, Electro means electricity, and lice talks about, um, like, think of it like lysosomes in um, cell biology. It's there what split the cell in half. And so it's really to using electricity to split up water. That's basically what it means. And so we take a water molecule. So we have this whole thing is submerged in water. And when you apply a direct electric current, so a DC current to it, water has a tendency to split into two H pluses, because there's two of them, and one O minus two. So it splits up into those. And then your basic rules of uh, opposites attract apply. The negative attracts to the positive plate, and the positive attracts to the negative plate. So let's look at what happens at the positive plate. At the positive plate, we have an oxygen that's a negative two. So it's oxygen with two extra electrons. That is going to turn into plain old oxygen, which is zero, uh, and it does that by giving up the two electrons that it has. And then the reverse happens, and that's why it's oxidation, because it's losing the electrons. And then the reverse happens here. We have H plus one. It gains an electron and turns into H zero. And then those are your two half reactions for this. They're very, very easy. Now, I have um, before I've said that, uh, well, these can be balanced as well. I said that this, the half reactions that we learn are essentially oversimplified. Um, the real half reaction, we know that oxygen is diatomic. It's part of Brinkelhoff, as is H. And so these things don't really exist like this. What's really happening is two oxygen negative twos are turning into an O2, which is the diatomic form of oxygen, and it's doing that by losing four electrons. And then here we have two H positive ones, and they're gonna gain two electrons, and they're gonna turn into H2. So those are the true reactions. And again, the balancing coefficients would actually still be the same. We would still need to um, essentially do this, two and one, in order to um, balance these because there's twice as many. But that's pretty much it for electrolysis of water. Where would we use this? Well, um, this is actually used all the time when you want to make oxygen. Uh, for example, a common uh, application of this is on the space station. When you're in outer space, you can't bring up just tanks and tanks and tanks of compressed air they're too heavy, so what do you bring up? Well, you bring up some water, and then the water can be split into hydrogen and oxygen. You can use the hydrogen to do things with it, like generate power and things like that, and then you can breathe the oxygen that comes off of it. So this is a process that um, just uses simple electricity and usually some catalyst like an acid, like citric acid or things like that. But um, it's used all the time for practical applications for generating oxygen uh, and hydrogen for that matter, if you needed hydrogen for something. And then the next application is electrolysis of salt. Same idea, except now we're going to use a salt. So when we use a salt, like for example, I'm going to use KCl, but we could use table salt. It doesn't matter. Now with electrolysis of salt, there's one issue. The salt has to be in the liquid phase. And that typically requires very, very high temperatures to get liquefied salt. But it, it is possible, and it can be done, and it is done all the time. And now that salt, when you put it in the, in the electric current, it will actually break the molecule or the compound up into K+, plus, which is in the liquid phase, and Cl-1, which is in the liquid phase. But again, it's just like electrolysis of water. The positive goes to the negative, the negative goes to the positive, and then you have oxidation and reduction. So chlorine liquid is going to turn into Cl0, which is a gas when it's in the uh, elemental form. 
by losing an electron. And again, I'll, this is not the real reaction. I'll show you the real one in a second. And then here we have potassium, which is plus one. It's going to gain an electron by going to this. It's going to the negative. It's negative because it has electrons on it. That's why it gains the electron when it gets there. And it's going to turn into K0, which would be a solid or a liquid depending on the temperature. It doesn't really, honestly, that's not that important. Uh, and that's what it looks like. Now in real life, there's one caveat. The chlorine is a naturally diatomic, so you really have two chlorine minus one liquids that turn into a Cl2, which is still a gas, and zero, and it's gonna gain or lose two electrons by doing this, and then the potassium doesn't change. And so then balancing these would really be two and one. Um, if you were just doing these two reactions, then they would be one and one. So just be aware of that. Uh, what is this used for? Well, it's used to purify elements that you can't find in nature pure either at all or very often. So like, for example, group one and group two elements, the alkaline and the alkaline earth, they are so reactive that they will catch on fire if they touch water. So if you think about that, there's no place on the planet where elements can get away from water completely. Even in the most dry desert on Earth, those deserts have only been deserts for maybe 10,000, 20,000 years or something like that. At one point there was water present and even in the desert it does rain from time to time. So these elements are never found anywhere in nature pure. They're always found in compounds. Well, if we needed them pure for something, then this is the only way to really purify them. Now, group one and group two are obvious because they are never found in nature pure. Other elements are found in nature pure, but in very low quantities, and so it's easier to just purify them through this process from compounds. Like, for example, uh, aluminum is almost never found in nature pure, same with copper and things like that. So if you had a compounds that contain them and you needed to purify the metal out, this is how you would do it. Um, the salts must be in the liquid form in order to do that. And so that is our video on electrolysis of both salts and water. They work off the same premise. They are slightly different from electrolysis or electroplating, but the concept or the application is pretty much the same.